Hey, I'm Pascal from Orange Pixel, and um, the last couple of weeks I've been talking about the new prototype, the new game I'm working on, and it's been inspiring and amazing to see all the comments underneath the videos, but also on the Discord channel uh, with all your ideas and your feedback and your thoughts. And it's been uh, amazing. Pretty much every time I post a video of the new game and it's still a prototype, I have no clear direction of where I'm going, but I'll get to that in a bit. Um, pretty much you guys fill in the blanks like maybe you should give your squad member skills maybe you should create certain buildings like this maybe you should have missions like that maybe you should do this or do that or the... amazing and all of that is pretty much based on these 15 to 20 minute videos and um, now imagine that you have um, six or seven days a week and just from morning till evening to think about a game like that in such a way which is pretty much what i have that's my job creating games and thinking about all the possibilities and the options. And when I start a prototype like this, I don't really go in with a big plan. I usually have a couple of ideas I want to try and it evolves from there on, um, which is something I want to talk about a little bit after the intro. All right, so if you're new to this channel, uh, I'm currently working on a squad prototype type game, an action arcade game where you control a whole squad, but it's an action game. And the only thing I set out to do with this prototype is figure out if I could um, have a turn-based strategy game, strip it from all the turn-based stuff, paste on some action arcade stuff, and mesh that into a new idea. And I have no idea if it's gonna work, but we are gonna find out because that's what I'm working on. And some people already mentioned some previous videos, you should make this a turn-based game and then it's a lot easier. And yes, it would be a lot easier, but my whole uh, challenge to myself is to create something that maybe doesn't really exist, but it would be fun and interesting to see if it's a good game idea or game concept. So my design document for this squad prototype game was pretty much a squad based action arcade game, real time. I think that's pretty much all I wrote down. Um, I created a mock-up of how I want it to look from top down and that just gives more uh, tactical options than side view so obviously it had to be top down and from there on it's pretty much um, every step I take or every decision I take is based on how the current game is evolving and of course uh, design documents are very good to have and uh, especially if you're working with a team that way everybody knows which direction you're moving and heading but I'm working solo on this game or at least on the code and the game design so I don't have to really uh, think about anybody else. All I have to do is think about the game every day and see in which direction um, it should go. And there are comments on videos like um, you should give every squad member a certain skill. Obviously, I thought about that as well. It's written down somewhere. And um, I usually have these ideas just uh, circling in my head. Good ideas will stay there. Bad ideas will probably fade out and never to be seen again. But as you're creating a game, uh, you need to take certain steps to get to a certain point. And um, skill-based, I can always add those things later to the squad members. Right now, it's not an important thing. Um, for me, the most important thing this week was uh, missions. I need to have a purpose for this game, or at least the player needs a purpose. So I needed to come up with some mission ideas. Now, I haven't figured out all the missions just yet, but the couple of things I did come up with is a vault. Um, I should probably explain this a little further. Uh, right now it has been a squad SWAT team, but we might remove the SWAT team a little bit and maybe make it a gang or a SWAT team that's also robbing other gangs somewhere in that direction. So uh, we have a vault mission, pretty much meaning uh, rob the vault from a certain gang or get into that vault, steal their stuff and get out of the building. Um, we have a territorial mission, storm a building, take out all the gang members in that building. Pretty simple and pretty much what I've been working on so far. Then we have a takedown mission, uh, plant bombs at key locations and this is going to be some sort of stealth mission so preferably nobody will notice you or spot you and you'll just move through the hallways, something like that. We'll have to figure out some stealth uh, gameplay mechanics. And then we have a boss hunt. Every gang has a boss at the top and you need to find that boss. He will be in a certain building, get to that building, find the room with the boss and try to take down that boss. And then we have a city vault, which is like a main vault and that gives you uh, power over the whole territory meaning you'll be the top dog, all gangs will be 
deleted, destroyed, done with, moving to the next city. Um, very vague concepts of missions, but they will give me some structure to work towards as we create the gameplay. So those are the missions I started designing earlier this week and I originally planned to start working on implementing those missions. But for those missions, we need proper buildings and a proper way to set up those buildings because certain missions will require certain different type of buildings. And for example, we want storage rooms and maybe want a room with lasers in it and a computer in the middle or something or data centers, different type of levels. So I needed a way to create those levels. The first part of this week, I started tinkering with a level editor. It didn't go well. All right, so uh, this is the game. And as usual, I uh, started building my level editor inside the game. Uh, this is the level editor. And then we can create a room, which works pretty well. And we can create another room, which also works. But, um, well, it already starts to show some cracks here and there. And this starts to mess up things. And we can continue this forever. And it's all a bit messy. It's also all very much fixable, but I honestly just was not in the mood to create a whole level editor because this looks cool, but we need to be able to create the floors. We need to add different uh, wall textures. We need to create furniture in there. We need to add doors and it can't be done in a normal tile level editor type thing because I know some of you will ask, why would you create a new tile editor? Why would you not just create one of the, or use one of the many tile map editors out there? I can explain. So yeah, um, the game works with a tile map pretty much, but the rooms and the stuff that you are building in this game or that we're using in this game are not just tile maps. I need to keep track of rooms, which are full blocks, because I need to be able to uh, light up a room and keep track of what's in that room and not so much what's in the other rooms. Um, the textures on the walls, the floor tiles, there's a bunch of things going on and uh, these are not separated tiles. It's full rooms that are being built and created at once. So a normal tile map editor, um, we could probably make it work for us if we do a lot of changes to the whole game mechanic. But I've been spending a lot of weeks on these game mechanics and making sure that the rooms are seen as rooms and that the squad knows if you're going into that room, I'll be in this room and we'll meet in the middle, something like that. There's a lot of extra information that I need and normal tile map editors just don't provide me with that information. So, um, either create a tile map editor like this which i tried for a little more than a day this was little more than a day's work just making it all work and then i ditched this whole idea and i started working on procedural generation again and i know a few weeks ago i mentioned that procedural generation was a no-go because it would be very difficult to place all the furniture in there but i still gave it a try anyway i'm not there yet but we do have progress so let me show you how a certain building looks now and this will be all procedural generated. So um, first, let me take out some of these guys right here. And uh, that guy and, ah, never mind. let him walk. Let's move into the building. And the procedural stuff here is that I created an apartment block and then the specified one apartment here, one apartment there. And there's still a few uh, up out the screen, outside the screen. But let's move into this apartment building. The furniture is now placed by the computer and okay this is pretty simple straightforward stuff i'm still working on it still tweaking it but um i came to the conclusion that most furniture like tables cabinets lamps things like that they will be placed alongside walls it's not going to be that difficult to place these things so that's already taken care of a large group of furniture types uh, the computer itself will decide where the bedrooms are and how many in this case, it decided that well, we can place one here, but there's room for another bedroom there. So we have two bedrooms in this apartment. Open the door and um, also place furniture alongside the walls. Not all walls just yet. Again, I'm still working on it. And uh, we have a bed, which is still crazy. And uh, we have another bedroom. Let's see over here. And a bed inside a cabinet, which is great if you want to hide your children or something when they're sleeping not sure exactly what but this all buggy but it's working and we're slowly getting somewhere all done by the computer another building as you can see a lot of cabinets and ice machines or whatever and um, another bedroom right here so um 
procedurally we're starting to get somewhere so right now uh, we only have an apartment with bedrooms uh, but we'll have to add bathrooms and maybe a kitchen a sofa area things like that um, i came to the conclusion that i just love procedural generation and working out how to create code for this much more interesting and much more fun than creating a level editor and then creating levels with it uh, this might not be the quickest way but it's certainly going to be the way that allows me to create a lot more variation a lot more different rooms and different apartment styles or building styles and um, just a lot more content with hopefully uh, not too much extra work and i'm still tweaking all the little variables and things for the previous generation because right now there can be like four tvs in a row or five tvs horizontally or five plans or three lamps next to each other those are pretty easy to filter out we're just going to limit every room to one tv so if there's already a tv placed skip the next tv you're going to place because we don't need it we only need one tv um, if you already placed a lamp here then make sure there are at least a four or five different tiles before you place the next lamp and uh, with a lot of those type of rules being added now hopefully in the end we'll end up with interesting rooms that at least have some decoration and furniture alongside the walls the next difficult thing will be uh, sofas tables chairs they are usually not alongside a wall but often a little bit off the wall or in the center or in the middle of a room or somewhere so we need to uh, create and define rules for those type of things but i'm pretty confident that i'll manage to figure out uh, good and interesting ways to place them also my first attempt a few weeks ago was just to create very realistic looking buildings but why would i this is not going to be a very uh, feng shui this is just going to be a random furniture in a random building with random people in them and you're going to shoot everything anyway so who cares what's placed where it should look uh, pretty cool on screenshots and everything else in motion should just be destroyable and nobody cares where the cabinet is placed except for when it's placed in front of a door or window which is one of the bugs i'm currently working on i don't need a bed or a cabinet in front of a door because then i can't enter the room makes sense i guess so finally this week i've been also working a little bit on uh, making certain things uh, better as your squad is more or better prepared to target the enemies we now have circles underneath so you can more easily detect a uh, threat so well this is getting very close um circles underneath the enemies are red and if they are near or one of the guys you should be watching for they have a certain icon i might remove this but for now um it's interesting idea and we'll see where it takes us and when we breach a building i should have now some enemies everywhere let's breach and you'll see these are moving on themselves i still a little bug that he's not entering the room with the other guy but uh, i'm not shooting i'm just letting my squad members do all the shooting for me there's still a lot of stuff that needs um improvement and i'm pretty sure this is going to be a thing that i'll be working on for the duration of the game and constantly tweaking it improving it to make sure that my guys know where they should be moving and who they should be targeting so that the player is really comfortable at letting these guys go out on their own and just take care of business and uh, it will be more about controlling your team having the over overwatch and just um they will take care of a lot of things like a bed in front of a door this is the, bu the bug i just mentioned there should not be a bed in front of a door they could have blocked the door but uh, that would just make gameplay a lot more difficult so um yeah a lot of stuff i need to fix in the coming week but i'm very happy with progress this week and like i mentioned last week we are heading towards uh, calling this more than a prototype which of course means i'll have to come up with a good name for this game and are these guys police or are they bad guys it's just a bunch of things i have to decide on so that we can uh, come up with a good setting and a good name for whatever this is gonna be and um this all needs to be filled up and still a bit a problem not sure how i'm gonna tackle this with procedural generation i guess right now i'm thinking about um finding an empty spot and then picking a random spot in the emptiness to create the center which will be a sofa a tv a table and then we'll just try and spread some stuff around but we also don't want to fill up the area too much with furniture 
because uh, we want to shoot bad guys and there need to be enough room for bad guys to move around but then we have this weird stretch which would be well you can't place a sofa in this hallway type thing but you could place some stuff along that wall it's there's a lot of rules that i need to figure out in order for this to be an interesting uh, procedural generated world and this would just be uh, the apartment buildings we're gonna do storage rooms which will have a whole other set of rules to it um maybe some banks uh, or maybe a hospital just a bunch of different areas that we will encounter in the game and of course if we have all those things figured out we need to somehow create a city map so that you can uh, see where the problems are and then move your squad to that part of the city and take care of missions it's gonna be like a little bit of a gta type thing but with a squad and uh yeah it's gonna be interesting that's that's for sure it's gonna be an interesting game but there's a long way to go and that's it for this week's video um not a lot of stuff to talk about this week i've been very hard at work and obviously wasted uh, a little more than a day on a level editor that i'm probably not gonna finish up um i just love procedural generation way too much so this is what i'm gonna be digging into um, I've also been tinkering with residual some more. The game is still not done. Uh, it should be done, but every now and then I give it some play sessions and I come to some conclusion that certain things should be done differently. And we're of course also porting to Switch. I have a pretty uh, cool and stable build on my Switch. Still certain things that aren't rendering correctly, but I'm sure I will get that fixed pretty soon. And then I will be submitting it to, to Nintendo, which is amazing and Friedel just mentioned on the discord that he also has the Xbox version up and running which again as mentioned many times before leaves us with the PlayStation version I'll be mailing Sony again on Monday because we still don't have dev kits not even for a PlayStation 4 frustrating but we'll get there I'm pretty sure we'll get there eventually but that's it for this week's video uh, thanks for watching subscribe like comment below and drop on the discord please drop on the discord come talk about the squad game if you have a great name for the game let me know as well i'm going to write down a long list of names every every name idea how crazy it is will be on that list and eventually we'll pick something for this game uh, hopefully pretty soon but um, that's it for now thanks bye and then the ideas of where do i take it well and after uh, we create a rectangle and um it crashes but I'm going all the way up in another direction.